Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, notebook, and your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of his grace. We've been examining being filled with the spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Next verse. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be being filled with the Spirit. Next verse. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in the course of this teaching we said, be filled with the Spirit is an instruction. Is an instruction. Be filled with the Spirit. And if he said be filled with the Spirit, it means you can be filled with the Spirit. So he gives an instruction to show us that we can be filled with the Spirit. The very first time in the church age, the very first time in the church age where that word was used, I didn't say the very first time in the Bible, but in the church age is in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Pentecost is 50. That's actually what Pentecost is, 50. 50 days after the Passover. Pentecost is a feast that happens after Passover. And you know, Jesus died on the Passover. And the Holy Spirit was given 49 days afterwards. And that is what we call the day of Pentecost, a feast of the Jews that was done annually. And the Bible tells us there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. Now when you see the word like as of fire, he didn't mean fire. It's just a figure of speech, a metaphor or a simile. You know, and whenever you see that used in the Bible, it's just a figure of speech to help communicate a thought. All right. So we keyed in on that word. They began to speak. They began to speak. That is key. They began to speak. And if you begin to speak something, that means you can continue it. If you begin to speak something, that means you can continue it. Notice two words in verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance two things number one they began to speak number two as the spirit gave them utterance two key things they spoke the spirit gave them utterance you will have to speak in tongues you will have to speak the holy ghost is not going to speak for you you will have to speak in tongues that's key and if you are giving something you receive what is given. You are the one to receive. It is not forced on you. It is not forced on you. Because some people are waiting for the Holy Spirit to force them, open their mouth. No, 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 no. You will have to receive what has been given. In other words, if the Spirit gives utterance, you ought to receive the utterance. Utterance means the ability to speak. The ability to speak. I was getting somebody filled with the Holy Ghost a few years ago. And he just kept his mouth mute. He wouldn't open his mouth. He wouldn't say anything. And after a while, I asked him, why are you quiet? He said he's waiting for the Holy Spirit to open his mouth for him. So I said, no, 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 sit down. It means you have not understood anything. Let's go back again to what we taught. I took him through that scripture. And I said to him, who began to speak? He said, they. Okay, so if they began to speak, who is supposed to speak now? He said, I. I said, can you speak? He said, but I don't know what to speak. I said, no, 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 you're not answering the question. Can you speak? Are you dumb? He said, no. Can you speak? He said, yes. I said, say something. He said, hallelujah. I said, good. So when we begin now, you have to open your mouth and say something. 
it is when you begin to say something that the utterance of the spirit flows through your mouth. The Holy Ghost doesn't speak for you. That's why many people don't speak in tongues because they have not been properly guided and taught. Please pay attention. So the Holy Spirit will give the utterance and you will receive the utterance. If you don't receive the utterance, it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit has not given you the utterance. It's left for you to receive. For example, John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his son to the world but the world must receive. First John chapter 2 verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. The sins of the whole world. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Next verse. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation he's not imputing the sins of the world on the world because jesus is the lamb of god that has taken away the sins of the world so god gave jesus but you have to receive jesus john 1 12 as many as receive him you see that so it's one thing for him to be given it's another thing for you to receive it's one thing for the holy spirit to give you utterance it's another thing for you to receive the utterance and begin to speak in tongues so you've got to receive if the holy spirit gives utterance you have to receive the utterance now let's get some background information on the giving of the holy spirit you know, people often say, please pay attention, that the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. That's not correct. The day of Pentecost was not when the Holy Spirit came. That's not correct. Because we have diverse examples in the scripture about the Holy Spirit. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and 3, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of the Lord hovered okay then in exodus chapter 31 you hear about a man called bazaliel bazaliel who was filled with the holy spirit and wisdom and understanding and he had knowledge bazaliel filled with the holy spirit in the book of exodus 31 in numbers chapter 11 moses did say he couldn't bear the burden of israel alone so god said i will take the spirit that is upon you and put it on the 70 elders and they will prophesy with you. So the Spirit of God came upon them in the Old Testament. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, you read of Saul being anointed by Samuel. And it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul from that day forward. Okay? Is Saul, in fact, he began to prophesy with them and they said, Is Saul also among the prophets? All right. So in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil. And anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So David rose up and went to Ramah. The spirit of God came upon David from that day forward. So the spirit of God was there in the Old Testament. David in Psalm 51 said, take not away the Holy Spirit from me. Why will he ask the Holy Spirit not to be taken? Because the Holy Spirit was on him. He had the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was upon David to function as a king. If you are going to function as a prophet in the old covenant, those who minister for God, the Spirit of God will come on them and they will be able to minister. They will be able to minister. So you cannot say that the day of Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit came. You cannot say... That the day of Pentecost was the first introduction of the Holy Spirit. That will be wrong interpretation of the scripture. Also we know that the Holy Spirit was on all the prophets of the Old Testament. All of them had the Holy Spirit on them. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20. 
Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Next verse. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As they were moved. Holy men of God in the Old Testament spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. In First Peter chapter 1 verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Next verse. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. So the spirit of God was on them when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So he says the spirit of God was on the prophets of the Old Testament. We also have the account of John the Baptist who was a prophet of God. The Bible says he was filled with the spirit from his mother's womb. He was filled with the spirit from his mother's womb. I will explain that in a bit. We also know that Jesus, when he ministered on earth as the Christ, the anointed one, he had the Holy Spirit on him. The Holy Spirit came on him as John baptized him in River Jordan. John saw the Spirit descending on him like a dove. So don't be drawing doves. The Spirit didn't come dovey. The Spirit came like metaphor, a figure of speech. So if you are drawing dove to show Holy Spirit, you are in idol worship. The Spirit didn't come dovey. He came like using the manner the character of a dove gentle the spirit came on him in a gentle way all right so john now goes further to tell us in john 3 34 john chapter 3 verse number 34 for he whom god has sent speaketh the words of god for god given not the spirit by measure unto him the lord gave the spirit to jesus in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to preach. Quoting from Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. A lot of scriptures good for your health. Alright, also Peter said in Acts 10 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and all this happened before the day of pentecost all of these spirit encounters all of this outpouring of the spirit all happened before the day of pentecost with that at the back of your mind we need to know what exactly is the significance of the day of pentecost what makes the day of pentecost significant the day of pentecost has significance Let's examine what it is. Matthew 3, 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Where John spoke about the ministry of Jesus to be accomplished in the future. That's a scripture we just read. Now pay attention. He didn't say he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. He said he will baptize you with, with, all right, with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. To baptize in means to immerse into. But he said he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. So he says Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Let's look at other writers of the same account. Mark chapter 1 verse number 8. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Same thing recorded. So we have double mention now. Let's look at triple mention. Luke chapter 3 verse 16. John answered, say unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I commit. The latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Triple mention. Look at John 1 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with 
the Holy Ghost, which baptized with the Holy Ghost. So we have record that Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Please pay attention. He didn't say Jesus will baptize in the Holy Ghost. He said Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Baptize means to immerse into. To immerse into. Baptize with means to immerse into. In other words, it means to identify with. Baptize with the Holy Ghost. Identify with. This was said by John before Jesus died and rose again. But what we know is that Jesus is the one who received the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit came on him. And he, having received the Holy Spirit, will now baptize with the Holy Ghost. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse number 5. For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So Jesus confirms those statements and says it will happen not many days from now. Alright? Jesus confirms. In other words, John was referring to what Jesus was going to do after his resurrection. Jesus confirms it by saying, this is going to happen not many days from now. And he said that after he rose from the dead. And Jesus confirmed it because he had already risen from the dead. Let's see what Jesus himself says about the Holy Spirit. Of course, you know that John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16 gives us detailed explanation. Detailed explanation of what Jesus means. We will see the unique thing about Pentecost now. Please pay attention. John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. I will pray the Father. So only Jesus can pray and ask for the Holy Spirit. You don't pray and ask for the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus prays. And I will pray the Father. So only Jesus can ask for the Holy Spirit to be given. Now, if you observe from what we have taught already today, we have all agreed that the Holy Spirit did not come to earth for the first time on the day of Pentecost. And we had a plethora of scriptures. He was there in Genesis. He was there in Exodus. He was there in Numbers. He was there in 1 Samuel. He was there in Judges. He was there all through. And Jesus said, he will give you another comforter. In Bible interpretation, when you see the word give or any word, Always examine that word within context. Within context. The chapters and verses were not put there by the Holy Spirit. They were put there by men who translated. And I will pray the Father and he will give. If your Bible is mine, I will underline the word give. And he will give. So the question now is, he will give seems to imply that the Spirit was not there. But from what we have read, the spirit has been there. So he will give, will have to be explained in context. What does he mean by he will give? He will give you another comforter. Now the next statement will explain what he was saying. That he may what? Abide with you forever. So the word give there is qualified by the word abide. He will give that he may abide with you forever. So the giving he is referring to is the abiding with you forever. That giving he is referring to here never happened at any time in the Old Testament. Nobody had the spirit in him forever. So this another give abide with you forever is a new testament reality 
The giving of the Holy Spirit done by Jesus here is that the Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. Look at the next statement. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him. Hallelujah. Say with me, I know the Holy Spirit. But you know him. All right? Now, hold there your thoughts. He, he will dwell with you and shall be in you for how long? Now, look at that verse 17. Let me finish where I ask you to hold your thoughts. But you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in, in, in you. Notice. So the giving of the Holy Spirit by Jesus is characterized by two things. Number one, he will be permanent. Number two, he will be in you. Remember, there were two prophecies we examined yesterday. The first prophecy from Ezekiel 36 and the second prophecy from Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Ezekiel 36 says, I will put my spirit. I will put my spirit where? In you. In you. That's new to the Jews because the spirit has never been in them. It's always been on them. And it only came on them to function in ministry. It's never been in. This is a new reality. Okay, all right, now. Now he says, I will put my spirit in you. And he calls that spirit that he will put in them a new heart. A new heart. A new nature. I will put my spirit in you. I will give you a new heart. That means the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is the nature of the believer. Have you ever seen anybody travel without his nature? You see, I'm traveling, but I will leave my nature at home. Then when I come back, I will take my nature back. No, your nature is you. Okay? So if the spirit will be in you, the spirit will be your nature. You and the spirit cannot be separated. You are one. He will be in you. So the Holy Ghost is the nature of the believer. Fundamentally, the Holy Spirit is given to us as a nature. Because we are born of God. We are born of God. The DNA of the believer or the DNA of God resides in the believer. John chapter 3 verse 3 to 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Next verse. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? <laughs> can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Next verse. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God born of water which is the spirit look at verse 6 that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit because you're born of the holy spirit your nature is holy spirit born of spirit is spirit you don't have spirit you and spirit are one you and the spirit are one Say with me, I am born of the Spirit. Give me verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now, so John 14, John 15, John 16, Jesus took time to explain this reality. That is to say that the uniqueness of the new covenant is two things. The uniqueness of the new covenant 
is two things. Number one, the Holy Spirit will be permanent. The Holy Spirit will be permanent. Number two, he will be in the believer forever. He will be in the believer forever. So the Holy Spirit given by Jesus is forever in us. That is the uniqueness here. He is forever in us. John 7. Now before I read John 7, Jesus lets us know, except, you know, except he leaves, the comforter will not come. Now, the coming of the Spirit there is unique with two things. What are those two things? Number one, permanence. Number two, residence. Number one, permanence. Number two, residence. And those two are the uniqueness of the Holy Spirit being given by Jesus. But of course, that will only happen when Jesus leaves. Okay? When he leaves. Look at John 7, 37 now. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Next verse. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. How do you know he's talking about Jesus? Because Jesus is the one that gives the water for you to drink. So out of Jesus' belly shall flow rivers of living water for you to drink. So the rivers of living water comes out of Jesus' belly. All right? Now, verse 39. But this take here of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Why? Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So this, the significance, the uniqueness of the day of Pentecost was permanence, permanence and residence, which was not there in the Old Testament. Was not there in the Old Testament. And understanding of this automatically debunks losing salvation. See that. Again, was the Holy Ghost given before Jesus died? Huh? Huh? Was the Holy Ghost given before Jesus died? Okay. Was the Holy Ghost upon men before Jesus died? Exactly. So that means he was around. The day of Pentecost was not the first day he arrived the earth. He was here. Okay, before Jesus died. Right, very good. Now, but the Holy Ghost was never given to dwell in anybody forever before Jesus died. Is that true? So, neither was he given to live in anybody. Did he live in Elijah? Moses? None of them. Okay, why? Because that will only happen after Jesus is glorified. Are we together here? So, what do we mean by Jesus being glorified? When Jesus, the incarnate, in John chapter 1 verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, the Holy Spirit was given to him. But when he was glorified, he will be the one to give the Spirit. Before his glorification, he too had to receive. But when he was glorified, he was the one now giving the Spirit. Giving the Spirit to those who believe the gospel. The father handed the authority to Jesus. So Jesus is the one who baptizes with the spirit. He is the one who gives the spirit. That means he is glorified. He is not the one that receives, but the one who gives. What do you mean by glorified? To exalt, to make bigger, better, more powerful, more authority. So Jesus got more authority when he died and rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, there were four accounts. Four accounts. Something happened that confuses some people. Because I have had people say, you can be born again, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. Have you had people say that before? Yeah, I've had people say that many times. Even pastors preach that. And they give three scriptures that seem to say it. One of those scriptures they use is John 20, 22. That you can be born again, but you don't have Holy Spirit. Why? Because 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So those preachers will tell you that they received the Holy Ghost, but they never spoke in tongues. Okay? But here, they have not received the Spirit. And I'm going to show you. There are two others in Acts 8 and Acts 19. So let's examine John 20. We all agree that Jesus will give the Spirit when he's glorified. Do we all agree on that? So let's examine what Jesus said. Jesus said, he goes... The spirit will not be given except he goes. The going is his glorification. When he will be exalted to the right hand of majesty on high and have the authority to give the spirit. Already he said the spirit is with you. The spirit is already with you. So what is he saying? He is saying to fulfill the redemptive work, to fulfill the promise of the father, I need to go to the right hand of majesty where I will have all authority and I will give you of the spirit. And I'm not going to give you of the spirit to visit you. I'm going to give you of the spirit to live on your inside forever. In other words, I will have to pay for your sins. Then when I pay for your sins, there will be a legal right for the spirit to own you. I need to go and pay for your sins. So Jesus went, paid for our sins. Because without the remission of sins, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in anybody. He only dwells in you because there is remission of sins. Look at John 20 again where we read, Jesus died, rose. The first thing he met was Mary Magdalene. Oh, Rabboni, Rabboni, I miss you, Rabboni. And he says, hold me not back. I'm not yet gone to my father, your father, my God, your God. Tell my brethren I've risen. And he went to heaven and settled the matter as a priest. Came back the same day and entered a room without a window and a door. Now, so John 20, 22, observe what he says now. And when he had said this, that is after he came back, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So they now say, when you are born again, you are born of the Spirit. But you need baptism in the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's like you have the Spirit, but you don't have the Spirit. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> they say it's like a cup. You have a cup with a little measure of the spirit. Then when you are not baptized. The measure will rise. Then when you are speaking more. The measure will be rising. On it will overflow. You've seen preachers use cup of water as illustration right? Alright. It's from this scripture that is not well explained. That they come up with such conclusions. You know. Um, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They say the spirit is more than salvation. After you are saved, you now go and be looking for the baptism of the spirit. So you see people on the pulpit crying, Oh, Father, give me the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father. That's a prayer in unbelief. That's a prayer in unbelief because this guy is already have the Holy Spirit. It's like asking for what you already have. Except you don't have it, of course. And if you don't have it, get born again. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Get born again. Get born again. Once you are born again, you never thirst again. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Glory to God. So they create two experiences for you. Where the spirit comes twice. Jesus doesn't teach that. It's our ignorance that teaches that. So pay attention. Don't forget the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what it is. So the question here is, did the disciples receive the Holy Spirit in this context in John chapter 20? If I say, receive my pen. Did I say you have my pen? 
If I say receive my pen, you don't have it. But I have made you an offer. So if I say receive the Holy Spirit, you don't have it. But I have made you an offer. It is where you collect it that you have it. Are we together here? So receive the Holy Spirit doesn't automatically mean you have the Holy Spirit. That word receive. That word receive. Okay? So the question here is, that statement does not conclude that you have my pen. I only made you an offer. Secondly, this happened and four accounts of Jesus instructed them when he rose from the dead. Receive. Receive. How many of you agree with the scripture that we read, that John chapter 20, that it was an instruction, an admonition, and not a conclusion? Receive. 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 Doesn't mean you have, but an offer has been made. Receive the Holy Ghost. Are we in the building here? Receive the Holy Ghost. And if he said Jesus breathed on them and said you have my spirit, it would be a different thing. But he breathed on them and said receive. He didn't breathe on them and say you now have my spirit. So the breathing doesn't mean you have the Holy Spirit. The breathing is actually the words. I cannot speak without breathing. If I say take, along with take comes my breath. So when Jesus said receive was the breathing. But didn't mean automatically they had. No, it didn't mean they had the spirit. So that means the breathing is not the spirit. So again, what does the breathing mean? In another service, we look at that. You know, but when, whenever a reference is not clear to you, you go to other references of that same account. So there were four renditions of the same account. When we put them together, we will understand what Jesus said. The first one is John 20, 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so send I you. As my father has sent me, even so, something is identified here. He was sending them out to preach. As my father has sent me, so send I you out to preach. Did they go anywhere to preach at that instance? No. They didn't go anywhere to preach. Instead, they went a fishing. Because after John 20 21, they went fishing. They didn't go to not fishing for souls they went fishing for fish they went fishing for fish fish fishing <laughs> they went fishing peter told them i go a fishing they said we go with you man <laughs> what are we waiting for here there's hunger in the land <laughs> jesus was with them 40 days after he made that statement, received the Holy Ghost. After that, he spent 40 days with them. After the fishing, Jesus appeared to them. See that? Now, look at Matthew 28, 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach. As my father has sent me, so send I you. All power is given unto me. Go in therefore and teach. So this same scripture in Matthew is what John was talking about in John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Do we agree? They are the same. Okay. Look at the third one. But before the third one, remember the instruction was to go on global evangelism. Okay. So... Matthew's account and John's account, they didn't go anywhere after that statement. We have no evidence that they preached anywhere. Mark 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven and they, as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Next verse. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, next verse, 
and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow those that believe. And on and on and on. So after Jesus said that, you will see that they went and the Lord walked with them. But that is a summation of the entire account. It doesn't mean they went at that same instance. All right? All right? Now, verse 20 refers to the book of Acts. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders following. So let's look at the detailed guy because there's a detailed guy who actually took all these their bits and pieces and gave us the detailed account that quickly explains the whole matter. And that is Brother Luke. And you know that Brother Luke was the one who wrote the book of Acts. Luke wrote Luke and Acts. Okay? And that clears John chapter 20 for us. Luke 24, 45. Then open it their understanding that they might understand the scripture. 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. So the same thing he was telling them in Matthew and in Mark to go and preach. That they should go and preach repentance and remission of sins in his name. Among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. 48. And your witnesses of these things. 49. And behold... I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Until ye be endued. So it didn't happen at that point. There was an appointed time for this endowment or for the fulfillment of this promise. And we know that that fulfillment was going to happen in Jerusalem. But they had to wait. Are you still in the building? Luke didn't tell us they went to preach because he had another book where he explained the progression of that instruction. So Acts chapter 1 verse 1. Glory to God. The former treatise have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Next verse. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proof. Being seen of them how many days? Forty days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom. Forty days. So, the 40th day was when Jesus left. He left them. From that 40th day, which was the Passover, they counted 10 days of waiting. Then the Holy Ghost came on the 10th day, which is 50. Pentecost is 50. So, Jesus left after 40 days of teaching. And then they tarried until Pentecost. Acts 1, 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. How many times did Jesus speak of the promise of the Father? Well, he spoke about the promise of the Father in John 14, 15, 16, in John 7, so what is the promise of the Father? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Or the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Which will happen not many days. Is John 20 clear now? So when he breathed on them, it was still the promise of that which was to come on the day of Pentecost. Look at verse 7 and 8 of Acts chapter 1. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. But, Kabayada, you shall receive power. You shall receive. You shall receive. You shall receive. Not I will force it on you. Not I will compel you to have. You shall receive. I will offer the receiving is yours. So if you come to the altar to receive and you close your mouth, you will go back the same way you came. Because the opening of your mouth is involved because there is utterance. And utterance must find a mouth to express itself. Uh, receive the Holy Ghost. Mm, 
you will be there. You will be there. And you will see visions. You will see those that are drinking, those that are falling, those that are prophesying. Only you will be the only one that your mouth is. But when you open your mouth, and then some people, <laughs> they will be looking around. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are a joker. We are dealing with eternal matters and you are supervising. And some people will insist to pray in English. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonder you are. You will be doing wonder till we go home. <laughs> and some people will insist to pray in their language. Oh, Abasimbok. Oh, Chineke. Oh. You'll be telling them, say something. They'll say, oh, Abasim. Oh, Abasimbok. Mbok. Mbok. <laughs> They are begging. <laughs> you think it's tongues. It's not tongues. It's a beggar, 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 beggar. <laughs> you have to be wise to know that the guy is just trying to trick you. You've got to open your mouth so that the Holy Ghost or trans given to you flows out. Glory to God. Say with me, I speak in tongues. Can I hear you shout it very loud? I speak in tongues. Mato beleketena. Membrando dodo do bobo shakala da baba. So John 2022 was an instruction concerning ministry. Because there is a whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And whoever sins you retain, are retained. How do you retain a man's sin? By not preaching. How do you forgive a man's sin? By preaching to him. Because the gospel is called the gospel of the forgiveness of sins. And when we preach it, your sins are forgiven. And you hear it, faith comes alive. And once faith comes alive, you receive the Holy Ghost. At that point, you're born of God. Kayadaba is a miracle that happens in starter. It cannot be explained. That's why I say it's like the wind. Boom, boom, boom. You can't explain it. It just happens. And as I'm speaking right now, things are already happening everywhere. But in this house, on TV, on radio, in the atmosphere, God's power moving all over the world and the glory of the lord as the water covers the sea hallelujah so jesus gave gave them an instruction to receive the holy ghost receive the holy ghost an event of the future he spoke about did they receive in acts chapter 2 they received the day of pentecost they began to speak in tongues as the spirit gave them Authorized. And before that day, nobody had it until that day. <clears throat> Jesus did not baptize with the Holy Ghost until the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was on earth, but was not yet given to remain forever in men until the new covenant, which brought about the new creation. What do you mean by baptize? Baptize which simply means the Holy Spirit will immerse you. Baptize with the Holy Spirit will carry you and immerse you into Christ. Immerse you into Christ. Sata. It's going to be the work of the Holy Spirit. Not some preacher that will carry you to a river by Oron and just put you inside and bring you out. No, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about supernatural. We are talking about the Spirit of God carrying you. And immersing you into Christ. A miracle that cannot be explained with English. It's called regeneration. Regeneration by the Holy Ghost. We're not talking about water here now. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So baptism is the immersion of the spirit. Carrying a man into Christ. Baptize with. Baptize into. So the Holy Spirit baptizes you into Christ. Or into the body of Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Yeah. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Whether we be bond or free. And have all been all made to drink. To do what? Drink into one spirit. Sato beletata. One spirit. All of us that are born again. It is the same spirit we drank of. Same spirit. And when we drank of that spirit, that spirit became our nature. So I don't try to operate in the spirit. I operate in the spirit naturally. 
naturally. I don't try to prophesy. I prophesy naturally. Why? Because it is already in me. I speak in tongues when I want to speak. And I stop when I want to stop. It's not like, why are you still talking? I can't control it. That's an evil spirit. The spirit of God does not disobey others. It's a spirit of order. So once your own is disobedient, you will know where it is coming from. <laughs> So we are baptized into Christ. That means you are now in Christ. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So when you hear baptize, you are baptized into Christ. Not into river somewhere. Look at Galatians 3.27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on what? Christ. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ are wearing Christ. What cannot stop Christ cannot stop you. What cannot fight Christ cannot fight you. Why? You and Christ are one. One. Stand up, let's pray in tongues. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Catoli de Bahia, Mando Socolo de Babrada, steer up yourself, steer up yourself, steer up yourself, rise up like an edifice, higher and higher and higher, Majo Kelenema, Nangrondo Socolo de Barra, Rakoto Belica, Tobele Keta, Dada Rakatone Mele, Mina Nagadaga, Egebo Jocolo de Boro Cotosa, La Garadaga Socolenema, Nengrada Socolo de Boro Cotose Kianamaha. I'd like you to grab somebody and, and just begin to pray together with that person. Minister to one another. Let's minister to the body. Everybody minister to everybody. Leko shoka, leko rotosa, marakadeke, legeregeda, lagodoroto, sekelinema, membranda zikelena, da grodo soko lodo bambra, nangro do bo sokelere bara katole gedegea, ege bo joko lodo bere ketu sapaya, zibaro tosea. Zibaro to seya, egere ne mosa, mangra da zaba, egere de bosha, kele de boba, bare de bahota. Pray, pray, pray. Zibaro to bila na bando godolo boroko to sekele na mama. Thank you, Lord. I like you to lift up your two hands and tell the Lord, use me, Lord. Use me to change my world. Use me to change my nation. Use me to change my community. Use me to touch lives. Use me to proclaim your word. Use me to manifest your kingdom. Use me to demonstrate your glory in these last days. Use my voice. Use my hands. Use my leg. Use my body. I yield myself. I yield myself. I give myself into the course of the ministry. I give myself for the work of the ministry. As I stretch forth my hand to heal that signs and wonders will be done I give you my voice use my voice to preach your word use my voice to manifest your glory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more prayer, Father. Let the zeal of your kingdom consume me. My soul on fire. My mind on fire for ministry. That I will not rest until souls are saved. I will not rest until nations are taken. I will not rest until communities are overturned. I will not rest until men that sit in darkness see great light. Open your mouth and pray. Father, let the zeal, the zeal for your kingdom, the zeal for ministry, the zeal for your work, let it consume 
Manzumi, Lago Chocolerebo, Le Grada Soperequeta, Mambra da Zakelerebo, Engaradaba Chocolo, Engabato Belete Baloto Baladaba. Oh, la bohos. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Member Daza. Anybody else who wants us to lay hands on you, just come and stand here quickly. Quickly, you want, you, you, you desire, you're hungry, you want God to use you. I'd like you to stand. I'd like you to stand. Ageba Joko, Dr. Gabriel, please come. Pastor, Pastor Praise, please come. Pastor Kukum. Stand, stand. We want to lay hands on you. Let Gorotosa open your hands and just begin to pray. Tell God, let your power flow through me like never before. Pastor Kufre, come. Let's lay hands on everybody. Just begin to lay hands on them. Let go so let the zeal of God consume everybody standing here. Let the zeal, let the zeal, let the fire, fire for ministry, fire for soul winning, fire to advance the kingdom. Let the passion, let the zeal we impart upon you, we deposit upon you, we lay upon you. Let go so we steer you up, we steer up your spirit. Rato begeda, rato lebega, hegebarokatasa, mambra. Gada Zekea, Agaba Jokolo de Baba, Le Broda Sombere de Meha, Engabato Beletebe, Beletebe, Beletebe. Use me, Lord, to change my community. Use me to change my nation. Use me to change my continent. Agabato Bele, Babalate, 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 Babalate. Receive, 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 receive. Angaba Shotolata, Babrada Socorado. Rato begede geba, rato beregede, mambranda sokolo. Hey, shakayada. Go ahead, go ahead. Steer yourself up tonight. Zokoroto sapayata, zekabaro to begeda, membrando zokolo de bosa, breda zokolo de babosh, beda zokolo de babosh. Hey, shakayada. Hey Shakayada, Moso Pereta Sayada, Moso Topere Ketanama, Meketanama, 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 Zubragadasa Talaba, Zubragadagalada Babarakotos. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Zibrananos. Zibrananos. Oh, glory, glory. Mandolo de Bosa, Kalana Baba. Legro de Sokolo de Boro Kotosaya. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Go ahead, open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, that would you talk boldness. Lord, I receive boldness. I receive boldness. Boldness to declare your word. Boldness to manifest your word. Boldness to operate in the miraculous. Boldness to manifest your glory. Open your mouth. Karato bele. Babra da zobregedes. Babra gadoze beres. Babra gadoze beres. Boldness. Anga bayotalaba, and they spoke the word with boldness. Rando me shakayana, 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 rando me shakayana. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, we decree and declare. Everyone under the sound of my voice, on radio, on TV, online, wherever your people are gathered, boldness to preach the word, boldness to cast out demons, boldness to heal the sick, boldness to manifest the glory. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Sick bodies be healed, be healed, tumors disappear. 
cancers disappear high blood pressure crash sick bodies be healed mezato beletegaya all over the world the army of men and women that will preach the gospel without fear rising all over the place boldness 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 to manifest god's glory is released right now in the name of jesus thank you father thank you for glory and grace thank you for glory and grace thank you for glory and grace father we give you praise see souls coming to the kingdom men that sit in darkness embracing great light father we see communities taking over nations taking over by the gospel of christ in the name of jesus father we give you praise for answered prayer in jesus precious name and every believer in this building shout that amen on a note of finality can we celebrate the manifestation of god glory go ahead and go ahead and go ahead and glory 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 Woo! i tell you it's happening all over this place oh you're about to be not just here all over the world the glory is all over the place the glory is all over the place you walk into sick places and sick people get healed even without saying anything you walk into places where darkness had covered before now your entrance dismisses darkness thank you lord jesus you are the light of the world a city set on a hill that can never be healed and with great power give the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all as you live here today you are living with great grace great power great grace great power Jato Balaka. thank you father hallelujah it is done i didn't hear your amen <laughs>